Well, hello friends, David Vos here again, and another beautiful day in Oklahoma. Another summer, um, hot day, and hope you're having a wonderful day where you're at. Oh my goodness, my friends, my friends. I have something on my mind. I don't know, a few days ago I had this, um, I'm going to say epiphany. I don't know what word to use. And I haven't shaken this revelation in several days. And it's just right there in my mind. I can't forget about it. And I've got to run this by you guys. It's perplexing. It really is perplexing. I I thought of at least five different things this week that just blow my mind. And two of them are completely ridiculous. Like there's it just changes my whole who I am. It just changes everything. And um, I am determined to figure out what to do about it. But I'm at a point now where I don't know if I can. I don't know if we can. Um, just as an example of how many of these crazy things that I'm beginning to realize, these things that are just popping up all around. But one is this. I grew up as a Jehovah's Witness, as most of you know. And, you know, yada, yada, yada. We know all the things they did wrong and what they did to me. And, you know, and, and, and come on. Most of us know they're just some religion and, and they're, mistaken and 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 it's sad and they've done a lot of people harm but they're not the only ones you can imagine how many people in the world are running around believing things and i don't even think they do believe i don't think people really do believe. i don't think we know what the word believe means i don't know what that means believe i know they're different than information it's different than Knowing something. Because if you knew something, you wouldn't have to believe in it. Beliefs are something very, very odd to me. But it just dawned on me today. I've thought about this a couple of times over the last few months. But I was like, okay, what are Jehovah's Witnesses doing now? Do you realize that Jehovah's Witnesses are over? And this is just one religion. The whole world, basically, we could say the same thing. But they're done. If you guys want to know if we're in the last days, if this is over, well, I will prove to you right now that Jehovah's Witnesses are over. And I think we could probably use the same logic for just about everybody on this earth. Every organization, every kingdom, every government. But, so Jehovah's Witnesses don't, believe in a lot of things. They believe in some things that other people don't believe. But one of their main things that, that constitutes being one of Jehovah's Witnesses, without it you can't be a Jehovah's Witness, is they believe you have to go out and do the the door-to-door -door work, preaching the good news, talking to people, going from door to door. That's how they do it. They don't believe that you can do the door-to-door -door work any other way, like on television. They never had a television studio because they didn't believe that was what Jesus told people to do. He said, go from door to door, they say. Now, I don't believe Jesus said to go door to door, but that's what they believe. And they believed it now, I guess, for a hundred years. I don't know. And it's one of their main tenets. And they're not doing it. They quit. They're not going from door to door. Well, think about it. They use that scripture, and I use it sometimes, that says, um, this good news of the kingdom will be preached in all the inhabited earth for a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. And so they believe 
that they have to keep preaching the good news all the way up to the time that Jesus returns in the clouds of heaven, which, I mean, they don't even believe he's going to return in the clouds of heaven, but, but you get my drift. They believe just the overthrow of this present world, Armageddon, and they don't think that Armageddon has occurred yet. So they should be out going from door to door. But the thing of it is, I guess it's illegal. They can't do it. Now, it used to be that they were banned in certain countries, maybe Russia for a little while. And then where they're banned, they used to do the work underground. Like if in Russia, I heard years ago that where uh, the Russians banned Jehovah's Witnesses, they were running around like a CIA organization over there. You you mentioned Jehovah's Witnesses to Russians and they're like, ooh, they think it's like some sort of secret underground society that nobody can do anything to. They're like agents of the Gestapo or something. You know, they're they're uh, more powerful than the government. But the thing of it is they go underground. They have to preach the good news of their kingdom, which is what they believe they have. They're not doing it. So then... I thought, well, I wonder if they're taking the jab because <laughs> if they're recommending to their flock to take the jab, then they'll all be gone soon. Well, there's another reason why they're gone. And, you know, I mean, back in 1950, Jehovah's Witnesses didn't believe in vaccinations. I hear there was in a watchtower somewhere in 1951, they, they said, well, I guess you can take vaccines. And recently they've had a couple of comments in the watchtower, I guess, saying to their flock that they should get vaccines or they, that they are allowed to. It's a personal choice. Well, if it's a personal choice, then they're all going to get it. Because Jehovah's Witnesses are obedient little people. And if the government tells them to do something and the organization says it's okay, they go out and do it. So they're over. They're done. Not just because they all got this thing, but because... They no longer can say that they would give their lives for their beliefs. Now that it came down to it, and the devil came down and said, now you stop right now, they went ahead and stopped. Now think about it. For many, many years, Jehovah's Witnesses would rather give up their life then do something against Jehovah or their organization or their rules. And so the organization would tell them that if, if the government came along and said, don't preach the good news, they had to do it anyway or die and go to prison. And like they didn't believe in blood transfusions and they carry a card around saying that they don't want a blood transfusion. And even if they were to die in, in a hospital... They'd rather die than take the blood transfusion. And there were people, there were Jehovah's Witnesses that died rather than got, get a, a blood transfusion. Well, there's always going to be people who will die through their faith as long as the organization itself is there telling them that they're the truth and this is the truth and they got to do it. Jehovah's going to be angry with you if you don't do it. And if you want eternal life, you have to do it. And so people did it. But now here we are. This thing called the, this thing. Everybody's getting. And Jehovah's Witnesses have just folded. All of a sudden now, they believe in it. I know. That doesn't mean a lot to any of you guys if you weren't Jehovah's Witnesses. I mean, it might mean something to you if uh, you were a Catholic and tomorrow the Pope stood up and said, hey, we're going to close it down. No more Catholics. It, you know, might make a bigger splash in your pool if you're Mormon and the Mormon prophet stood up tomorrow and said, we're disbanding Mormons. We're not going from door to door no more. We're not going to build temples. In fact, we're tearing it down. I mean, that would be a big deal. I mean, my whole family lived and breathed this religion and disowned their family based on what the watchtower says. And now the watchtower is just sitting back and not saying a word, even though by doing so, they have just stood down and proved that they are no longer 
even pretending to do whatever it is that they said they were doing, like being some kind of a faithful and discreet and wise slave, preaching the good news of the kingdom and all the inhabited earth for a witness of all the nations so the end can actually come. And, you know, they're going to go in, he in heaven and rule with Christ over the world. And they're the truth. But, you see, they've just admitted that, no, we're not going to do that anymore. So, you know, I mean, this is a big deal. But I digress. But we are literally... At a place where all of the hypocrisy is being revealed. I think that they're pushing things so far that I can't imagine that human beings could go along with the charade much longer. But then again, Jehovah's Witnesses are still going along with the charade, pretending they're Jehovah's Witnesses because I haven't had any of my relatives call me in, in the last few months saying, hey, by the way, we found out our religion isn't true, so now we can talk to you. Now, they're going to continue on with the charade. They'll never talk to me again. Even if they decided, oh, there was no Jehovah's Witnesses anymore. They'd still hang on to somehow, I guess, maybe out of pride or whatever. For whatever reason, they probably would still never talk to me. I don't know why. I can't figure it out. Why people will go on and on and on in a course that makes no sense. In other words, yeah, if you don't do any thinking, you might be fooled into some particular way of life. Oh, you'll join the church or you'll do this or you'll do that or you'll, you'll go down and get your S-H-O-T or whatever. But if you actually did some thinking about anything, and no matter who you are, if you were a Catholic and you ever laid eyes on a Bible and thumb through it just real quickly, you'd see you weren't supposed to bow down to idols or say many words in your prayers or read a prayer from a piece of paper or, or call any man your father. If you were um, anybody who's anybody, like let's just say that you were a doctor and you were told that you needed to radiate somebody's lung out of their chest. I believe that it ought to be that people would stop and say, wait a minute, I'm not sure that I can do this. I'm not sure I want to do this. Oh, well, you get paid a million dollars a year for, for doing, oh, well, yes, I guess I could do that then. But I don't know. For me, I can't, I just, I have a hard time just hurting other people, let alone radiating their lungs right out of their chest because Mr. Fauci says so. But look, that's just one of these little oddities that I see. But let's get to the real point that I have today. This is very, very, very concerning for me. I'm going to need some help with this one, guys. You know how the esoteric wisdom teaches that there's only one divine being. You know that, right? I mean, we've been talking about it in my videos for years. But it, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll give you a quick, small little rundown. Okay, and this is what scientists believe as well. And as far as I know, all esoteric wisdom, Hinduism, um, I believe the New Testament teaches this beyond a doubt. I believe the apostles teach this. I believe anybody with any real common sense would, after a very short time, capitulate and they would admit that this is the truth. That there cannot be a reality of time and space, of atomic particles running around, swinging, flying through the air, um, 
big giant suns and planets flying all over the place and all of existence cannot possibly be anything more than images. And images are simply the exact same thing that is in your mind when you think or you dream and you see a picture in your mind. And when you're sleeping at night and you become unconscious to the physical world around you, you become completely conscious within your dream. You may be speaking to some people. You may be with animals. You may be in a in the woods. You may be in the city. But you're seeing very clearly a world, much like the world we live in. And you're probably talking to some of your friends or people. Sometimes you wake up and you're talking to somebody. You don't, you've never seen this person before in your dream. The person in your dream. You don't know who it was, but you were talking to him. And you can have dreams where you... Um, get beat up. I mean, it could be, you can feel pain. You can, ch you can be chased. I've had dreams where I've chased other things or they chased me or, uh, I mean, everything that could happen in the real life can happen in your dream. So if you believe in your dream that it's all real, but then you wake up and find out it was just all a big, ghost that none of it really happened then you cannot prove that the physical world around you is any different and the funny thing is is that not only can you not prove that the physical world is really physical you can't prove it. But you could scientifically and with mathematics prove that it's not real. I'm not going to spend hours trying to explain this in this video. We've done many videos on this. I think most of my subscribers know what I'm saying and you're all up to par on this. You know that uh, quantum physics nowadays says that the physical universe is a force. But it's not physical, it's not a particle, it's just a force, like a force field. It's a wavelength. But there is something that exists. The Bible, religion says it's God. Of course, esoteric wisdom tells us, well, what is God? God is mind. God is the being. And there can only be one being. Okay, now you can prove that mathematically. You draw a circle on the chalkboard. And you say, all right, there's only one circle. And everything that we draw in the circle is within the circle. And everything we draw outside of the circle is outside of the circle. And that is the outer and the inner. And so nothing else exists except what is outside of the circle and what is within the circle. So the same thing with math. You've got numbers that can go infinitely from one to gazillions and gazillions. And we've got fractions, you know, half, one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth, one thirty second. And you can do that infinitely. So you can take, here's a better way to explain it. You can take a little pin point, just a little dot, as small as you can possibly imagine, a little pen prick, just a very small dot. No matter how small it is, if you had small enough scissors, you could cut it in half. Or at least in your mind, you can imagine whatever that thing is, it's a whole thing. It may not be very big, but it is a whole point. It's a whole, you know, if you could magnify it, you'd see it's a circle or something, or it has some particular shape. And breadth and width and diameter. No matter how small, it's got diameter. Radius, it's got breadth. When it stops having any breadth or width or diameter, it doesn't exist anymore. Anything that exists, that truly is, has 
dimensions, but dimensions is the, is the way you explain it's your vocabulary to describe it. But it's, it's just a description, an example. It's perception. You know, we have a body with sensory perception. So we perceive that it exists. Now, if it had no existence, we, there would be nothing to move us, nothing to touch us, nothing for us to know that it was there. So if we couldn't hear it, then it didn't have any sound. Now, sound comes from things bumping against each other, vibrations. See, so if there's something physical there and it bumps, it's going to make a vibration. Now, it might not be loud enough, but I mean, the point is there's a vibration. That's what sound is. If it doesn't make a sound at all, if it can't make a sound, then that is one indication that it might not exist. Now, it may be that it's just a visible thing. It's made out of jelly and it, it doesn't vibrate. <laughs> okay? So you're not going to hear any sound because it's just so soft. Maybe it's a little drop of water. Even water could make sound, I suppose, in, in a very finely tuned ear. I don't know. But the point is, is that if you can't imagine that everything in the universe has a sound, well, can you imagine that everything in the universe at least has a shape? And you could feel the shape if you touched it. If you could get it big enough that you could feel the contours or whatever. It might be soft, it might be hard, it might be large, it might be small, but you could describe it in some way. And that's, that's what it proves that it exists, is that it's describable, that it is conceivable. That there is a mathematical formula for it. That there is a smell. That there is a something, a story. Ah, uh, there's something. It exists. That you can't see it. And you can't hear it. You can't taste it. You can't smell it. Then you wouldn't know if it exists, right? Wrong. Because if I'm in a dream and I touch something, I smell it, or I see it, I've already shown that that doesn't prove it exists. But what, in both situations, we find does exist, is me. So, if I see something in the physical world, I smell it, I touch it, whatever. All I'm doing is, I'm confirming that I am an observer. I observe something. And it doesn't matter what I observe. It, I could be um, having an illusion. It may be all in my mind, but at least I exist. And now, Descartes said, uh, I think, therefore I am. And this has been the basis of our belief for a long time. I don't know whether you'd call that a mathematical theory <laughs> or some sort of um, uh, axiom. But it is certainly a statement that people have accepted point blank. I am the only thing, the I, the being is the only thing that we can prove exists. Everything else is a perception of your being. And we don't know in fact, I was going to say we don't know if anything other than the being or the I am exists. We don't know. But I, I, I think we could safely say that we know that nothing else exists but the I am. Nothing. As we've said before, if anything exists, it has to have time and space to exist in in order to see it, or feel it, or touch it. But time and space are concepts. They can only be perceived by a mind. There's no other way to perceive color except that it goes through the eyeball, bounces off the retina, and goes into the cerebral cortex or the, the thalamus gland, the back of the brain, 
and sends electrical currents through the brain and we have an impression. We learn to identify that impression with some phenomenon. So, when something feels hard, it's a concept. Something feels soft, it's a concept. Okay, there isn't any physical reality, but there's an energy, and the energy can be perceived by different creatures differently. Okay, let's say that dolphins have radar, which I don't think they do, but I'm just trying to think of something. If, 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 um, a little ant has an eyeball that's got like 18 different sections, then they see and perceive things differently. Some animals have different cones or different things they can see at night and we can't. So there are different ways to perceive. Now, I know that stuff exists at night, even though if I can't see it. The cat can actually see it. But what if we didn't have eyes? Would it mean that that cougar didn't exist coming down the trail in the middle of the night? It doesn't exist because I don't have eyes. Well, I could still hear it. I could still get eaten by the cougar, even if I couldn't see it. So, it's not, we can't prove that just because I don't see something, it doesn't exist. But what we can prove is that all that really exists is the I am, whether it's in the cougar or me. Because even though there may be a cougar and I may not see it, and that cougar comes over there and eats me, well, that doesn't prove that I got eaten. Because then I wake up from my dream and I realize it was just a dream. So, it is only perception. I can perceive that I'm being eaten by a tiger, even if I didn't have the ability to see the tiger. But I'll know, the only way I'll ever know if that tiger really existed is if I don't ever wake up. If that tiger eats me, then it was real. Because I know I am real. Because I think, therefore I am. I am perceiving, and so I am an observer. That's the part of the reality that we know exists, the observer. But no one can prove that there's any more than one observer. In fact, mathematics says there can't be more than one whole, one universe. You can't say, um, there's a universe that's infinite, But there's another universe that's infinite too. Can't be. Because if those two universes are both infinite, they're going to overlap because somewhere within infinity, the other one's going to exist as well because infinity is there's only one. And this is why the Bible says that, you know, he was joined in the Lord as one spirit. Jesus said, I and the Father are one, and ye are one with me, and we are one with the Father. This is why the Bible talks about love, that, that our divine Father in heaven is love. Because love is like compassion, empathy. It's a feeling of wanting to be one. All the parts of the whole working harmoniously together in love. And so whatever the universe is, we can never be greater than the universe itself. The universe itself can never be just the perception. It has to be the perceiver. It has to be the observer. And the only thing you can prove exists is yourself, the observer. You can't even prove that any other observer exists. Because the observer is not material. You can't observe the observer. And, as we've said, it's probably true that the observer is the whole, the one, and there can only be one, one. You can't have two ones. Like the, the one. You can't have two the ones. Well, I should say it differently. The word whole, the whole pie, 
Okay, that's all you got is the whole pie. You can cut it in half. You can eat half the pie and I can eat half the pie, but I can't eat the whole pie and you eat the whole pie as well. There's only one whole pie, only one. And so if the universe is a complete universe, then there's only one. There can't be two. Now, there could be many observers observing the one universe. But if that were true, we would all be not just an observer, but the one who wills, the one who's creating the, the you know, the one imaging the universe. The time and space is the, the, the concept. We're all conceiving. So there is more than just observing. There's conceiving. There's willing. The willer, the one who wills something to happen, can't possibly do that, that desire, without observing it. Because you can't have desire without knowing or feeling. So the observer and the conceiver are the same, the being. If someone else is a being other than me, and they're over there conceiving and willing and creating and imaging and observing their creation, wouldn't their desire be for their own creation? Wouldn't they be the one creating? Not me. I might be creating something else. And since everything that I'm creating is invisible, because there's no time and space, that's just a concept, then I would never know that you were over there creating and willing and observing your own universe. And I was over here creating and willing and observing my universe, but how would my universe ever somehow come into contact with your universe unless there was some link between you and I? And therefore, that link must be that we are the same observer and the same conceiver. And therefore, we get back to the scriptural truth that the divine being is one. I and the Father are one. And this is why we have to have love. Because we have to work together. We have to cooperate. And by that logic, we, we prove that we are the same conceiver and the same willer and the same observer. We can prove that. I mean, we can prove that if indeed you do exist, because I have no way to verify whether you exist. Because if you were to do some kind of phenomenon to prove that you exist, and then I wake up from my dream, how is it that you have proven anything to me? I still wake up with just me, myself, and I. Oh, I know, five minutes later, somebody comes in and interrupts me and spills the coffee. But again, I wake up from my dream and there's no coffee. It's just still me, myself, and I. The entire thing is a dream, and I'm the dreamer. Somebody, could somebody get into my dream? No, because I'm seeing invisible, I'm just seeing images that I'm putting forward from my conception, from my will. I am the willer, I am the desirer, and I am the dreamer. You're not the dreamer in my dream. This is my dream. And my tragedies that I've, my monsters that I've created out of fear, I created those. Now, you say, what if there's a man over there lying to me and he, he makes me believe in false things and then I began to believe in him? Well, that's a great theory. But it still presupposes that there is any other person in your dream. Maybe you dreamed up that monster and the creator of the monster. Maybe you want to live in this illusion. Maybe you got tired of being alone and you started talking to yourself and inventing little friends. And now you've got a whole bunch of little friends and you blame some of your little friends for all the mischievous things going on and you blame some of the friends 
for all the good things. You like some friends and you hate some friends. Maybe you're schizophrenic. Maybe you're so lonely that you invented a universe to play in. And you, you've got this ability to imagine. Well, we know that you do because that's what the Creator does. He creates. So the Lord, the Divine Being, is the only being. He created everything. Everything that exists is in His mind. He created it from His own mind, spirit. Not from flesh. He didn't take a, a hammer and a chisel and a screwdriver and some pair of pliers or something and a uh, handful of nails and go down and create the universe. Well, then who created the nails and the hammer? Now, the hammer and the nails and the, and, and the tape measure and everything that the Lord's got to create the universe is all a concept. And he's just creating with his mind. At least that's what the Bible tells us. The book of Hebrews says that, that, that the universe was framed by faith. And Genesis 1 says, he said, let it be and it was. Amen. So be it. Everything happens by faith. The question is, is whose faith? Your faith. According to your faith, may it be so. Look, there could be other beings, but I would never know they existed because the physical universe doesn't exist. The, the, the one who is willing can only imagine or think in his mind that he wants to go five steps forward. He never has to be afraid that maybe someone else thought those thoughts for him. And if he went five steps forward and bumped into a tree, he could never blame somebody else for putting a tree in his way because the entire dream came from your subconscious mind. So you have a subconscious mind. You might not even be aware of what kind of stuff you're doing in there. But you're responsible. You've got a super conscious mind that may be running the whole universe. I know you don't know it. You're one with the divine being. Whoever's joined in the Lord is one spirit. And one day we're going to wake up. Right? We're incarnating in a classroom because we're trying to become like God. To become one with God. Not just to be like Him. But to be him. Or her. Let's say that a billion years ago I incarnated as Bob. And I was Bob and I was running around doing things that Bob does. Never heard of Dave, right? That was millions of years in the future. Never even dawned on me that Dave was ever going to exist. I was Bob. Well, Bob was all alone. Bob was learning to imagine he was lonely, right? He was he wanted to he, he do something. He got bored. He didn't know who he was. He wanted to learn. So Bob was walking along and he met somebody. And he fell in love and they had children. And they built a house and then they got old and then they died and they were buried in the local cemetery. And then Bob was incarnated again back into the world and this time he was Susie. And Susie went forth into life and became a nurse or a housewife or whatever she did. She planted a garden. She became an artist. She was a musician. But she eventually died. And then when she died, she woke up on the other side and realized she was also Bob. Her first life was Bob. And now she's Susan. And, and, and she reincarnated again in a world that she created, you know, in her mind. She dreamed another dream. And this time she was Harriet. And she lived many lives this way. And one day she woke up and found out that she could remember her past lives. 
And she found out that she was the divine being. But she really didn't want to know that because that's the whole reason she invented this whole world. Because she was bored. And she was playing. You ever seen uh, a homeless person talk to themselves? Yeah, we all do. But the homeless person does it without caring whether you see him. Because he's been alone for so long, he doesn't even know you exist anymore. You're not part of his reality. Since you haven't said hello for so long, he doesn't even know that you're real anymore. He has no one to talk to. You might as well not exist. He has nobody to talk to. He's all alone. He is the only being in his little world. So he makes up little friends. And he talks to them. And in his world, he's having a wonderful conversation with many of his friends. And I'm sure they all have names. And I'm sure it's all very real. But for you and I, he's just a crazy old man. Maybe he's got schizophrenia or worse yet, maybe he's crazy. But one thing for sure, we can prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that we cannot prove that that old man even existed because the only person that ever saw the old man talking to himself was me. Oh, and you, and, and you verified it. You were there that day, but I woke up and it was all a dream. And every time I wake up in the morning, it's just me. Always. I always wake up as me. I'm beginning to think that I am me. That's the only one consistent thing. I can see the crazy man talking to himself. I can see you. But how do I really know that you exist? Because according to my religious upbringing, we're both just a little ego lost in a world of vibrations where there is no time or space, where all is now. Not only did you not exist and were just a figment of my dream or my imagination, but everything else around me may very well be as well. But the one thing I can prove I can prove that I exist. Starts making more sense now. And I realized that it was the crazy man who was sane and the sane man who was crazy. The crazy man believes he's God. And he creates his own world. But the sane person, whose name is Albert Einstein, goes out and builds a bomb to kill everybody. And goes to bed believing that he's a real person. And that there is no God. But there is an Albert Einstein. And uh, many other billions of people that have to be depopulated. So that's the one thing we can be certain of. That he was crazy. And if he was crazy then we know that most of the people running around are even crazier. Because they believe that the sane man who talks to himself, that lives in a world that he created for himself and by himself, is crazy because he actually thinks that it's important to get to the cliff by nine and into a sleeping bag by 10. Because that's his routine. And it's very important. Because Barney 
and Billy and Bob and Susie and Janet were all going to be there in his dreams tonight and he can't miss it. But the sane man is running around not talking to beings that he's created in his mind but talking to beings that don't exist at all that he thinks were created in somebody else's mind because he doesn't even realize that the world that he's living in was created by the crazy man who is simply a guardian angel who is too wise to get stuck in this world of ridiculous coming and going and believing in things that don't exist like having to get to work by nine because I'm a astrophysicist and I've got to create the, uh, a bomb because World War Three is coming and we've got to defeat Hitler which is just a dream in only my mind. Some sort of a nightmare that I've created because I can't prove that any of you exist. But friends, it's worse than that because the one person that I have proven exists myself I have actually refused to allow my mind to accept the reality that I know is true I was certain that I had crossed all the T's and dotted my I's I've used all the very important math that Pythagoras taught me. He's a little character in my mind. It's funny how I learn so much from these little characters that I create. And Mr. Newton taught me some very important things. And, I, and I've used all of his teachings. And I put them all together. And I proved that my teachers don't exist. And I've proven that my world doesn't exist. And I've proven that I shouldn't be here. But that I'm something that I cannot comprehend. I'm not floating. I'm not gliding. I'm not walking. I'm present in some sort of an illustrious dream. And I've verified. Now I've checked it twice. But I won't. I refuse to let go of you guys. I, I, I don't know that I could live without believing that you're real. I feel like I'm a, a toddler at maybe five, six years old that still got a pacifier. And, and, and I'm old enough now to realize that, man, this is really weird. I need to, like, dump the pacifier. Start eating some real food. But why? I don't have a mother. I've invented her, too. So I can tell my mom to let me keep my pacifier. But for some reason... I lived a hundred years as a toddler. It took that long. And I got so tired of being a toddler and I started thinking, wait a minute now, mama's going to come home any minute and save my ass and take this pacifier away from me because she knows it's not good for me and she loves me and she'll guide me. Mama never came home. And I didn't know whether I dreamed it to scare myself or whether I woke up and realized that 
the one thing we really need very, very much in this world is the one thing we can't prove exists. And if I can't prove it, why don't I just keep pretending? Well, I've got another idea. How about I declare that I am God? And if all of you guys start laughing at me, I'll just wake up. I'll turn the channel. I'll watch another series where they believe in such things. I'll surround myself with little friends that believe like I do so that I don't get sad. Only problem is, is that I love you guys. And I don't think it would be right to lie to you guys. I think I'm going to have to tell you the truth. The truth is, is that science says you guys don't exist. I'm sorry. And I know it won't hurt your feelings because you don't exist. You don't have feelings, right? So, I'll comfort myself with these words. And I'll just have to rethink the universe. I'll just have to realize that, wait a minute, I thought that I was supposed to have friends, that there was supposed to be somebody with me, that it was a universe of endless, boundless numbers of wonderful things, and it really is just a very lonely, crazy world that I still haven't quite figured out. Therefore, I might go back to do some more dreaming and is that what creation is anyway? We, we call it creation. Does it just mean we dream? We envision? We make up things? We pretend? Like when we were children, we were out playing trucks and cars or, you know, doctor or house or whatever, you know. We are just playing. And and maybe that's what we're doing here in this world. We're, we're not really doing anything. It's not very important, right, this nuclear bomb. It don't hurt nobody. It's just a dream. Come on. But we're pretending. Only we're not we're. We're just me. Hmm. Well. <sighs> Looks like I'm almost an hour and I haven't been able to get to the part where I'd be like, oh, just kidding. You guys exist. Do you need me to tell you that you exist? Are you looking for some sort of uh, confirmation? I'm just a figment in your little mind. I'm just part of your dream. I can't really guide you on your journey. Really, you're in control of your dream. If you really are dreaming. So, I don't know. You know... Since there is no physical universe, and I'm just living in this mental dream, then okay, we'll, at least we could say that maybe there is another universe, a completely vast, amazing universe that exists in your mind, and maybe you exist, and maybe we're like, well, we said we're not floating. We're, because there's no time and space, so we can't be floating on the air, which doesn't exist, because that's part of our dream, too. We're floating, or we're walking, or we're traveling some way or another, but in a dream, and we're not going anywhere. It's like a hologram, right? But maybe whatever we are as willers and dreamers and believers, maybe all we got to do is believe in each other. And. Maybe Dorothy was right and dreams really do come true. That's all I got. But like I said, it's a, it's a tough one and, and I've got a lot to think about. But according to the math, I'm the only being in the universe and I guess I am the divine one. But I forgot who I was. And I made all you guys up. Wasn't that clever? Well.
like I said, I, I, I don't know that I even like this new revelation because I'm not sure I want to be the only person. I'm not sure I want to be the divine being. I don't think I do. Sometimes that's a very big responsibility for one person to bear. So, I think I'll either just try and figure out some logical way that I can find a way to believe that you are all here and you're all my friends and we're going to each of us exist forever and ever and ever and we're going to have love and we're going to have families and we're going to have uh, adventures forever and I'll see y'all again somehow that's either got to be true and if that's true then I got to find some logical way to, to keep you guys going because look I've come to this place now and if if I can't prove that you guys exist how long will it be until I just start talking to myself and you see me along the road mumbling something under my breath and nothing really matters anymore I don't know but if there's anybody out there that can help me um, anybody anybody at all I mean you know Einstein couldn't do it because he still believed in in the in, in equals MC squared so we I don't think he's got a prayer and, you know, Darwin thought that we all evolved from a polywog. I don't think I'm going to get any help from him. Freud thinks it all happened because of my mama. And all the rest died. And I feel like I'm here alone trying to figure this out. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go, guys. Until next time. Uh, well, wait a minute. I guess you guys don't exist anymore. Hmm. Well... I guess as long as I'm still dreaming and you guys still keep commenting below, I'll assume that there's got to be a way that you guys really do exist and I'll come up with a, a formula to figure it all out here and everything will be fine in the morning. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one.